The K63 wireless mechanical gaming keyboard from Corsair can connect to your computer via ultra-fast 1 millisecond 2.4 gigahertz wireless technology or low latency Bluetooth and features per-key blue LEDs, 15 hours of gameplay on a single charge, and genuine Cherry MX switches. It's Lapboard ready too, so click the sponsor link in the description for more information. Welcome to Paul's Hardware. I have been planning this video, I say that with absolute confidence, for a very long time, uh, over seven months now, because I wanted to give a, a quick experiment to let you guys know, if you're looking for a bargain on a computer, what parts can you get away with not even having? Today we're going to experiment with not even using a freaking computer case. And again, completely planned, well ahead and in advanced, I have this system right here my HTPC, been asked about many times, I've been promising an update on it, that's what we're doing today. I'm gonna show you guys what your computer would look like if you ran it without a case for, again, about seven months time. I'm gonna show you guys how this is set up right now as well, just to kind of give a once over of my HTPC configuration. And then we're gonna see what it'll take to actually clean this off since it is now springtime and spring cleaning, well, that was also planned ahead. This is a very well planned video. So guys, clearly my HTPC living room area here is not in the best shape. Uh, I, I left things dusty because I haven't dusted here and I wanted to leave the computer dusty as well as everything over here dusty as well. Now this HTPC is set up for HTPC duties, which means that uh, via the uh, external HD home run over here with the cable card uh, over the network, it can access uh, the three TV tuners that are in there so it can record. Uh, I have several SSDs, actually a couple SSDs and a big mechanical drive, hard drive connected to that. And it's been perfectly functional, but it's also been pretty exposed over here in the corner. Now, uh, my focus for today's video, apart from just getting this thing cleaned, is going to be the difference between fanless and fan-enabled configurations. So we have, of course, the big old fanless CPU cooler on the top here, um, which I initially uh, showed you guys in my video last year when Ryzen launched. And we've also got a GTX 1080 over here. Um, which using EVGA's smart fan mode has been always spinning the left fan, but pretty much never spinning the right fan. So we'll show you a difference in uh, dust buildup between a fan that's been spinning all the time versus not at all over the past seven to eight months. Now I wish I could also say that the uh, power supply has been the same power supply this whole time, but it hasn't. Actually, this was swapped out just about two weeks ago. No, about three weeks ago. So this hasn't been running 24-7. Uh, Although this is a slightly older power supply that does run the fan all the time. So because of that, I've noticed it gets super, super caked with dust. At least the old EVGA unit that I had here was very caked with dust. So I will also be swapping that power supply out for this power supply today, the Enermax DigiFanless 550 watts to further remove fans and also further remove potential dust buildup from the system. Now, apart from the basic HTPC functions of uh, recording TV and also being able to play games, uh, I have set up the controls for this to be controlled by this IO Gear uh, keyboard. I'll put links to this stuff in the description if you guys want to check them out. I also have a Logitech Harmony 700 remote, uh, so we can have a single remote for turning the TV on and everything. Uh, and I'll put links to that stuff in the description if you guys want to check them out. Now, I also have been playing games out here, and for that I've got the Xbox 360 controller, and uh, to pair up with that we have the actual receiver. Everything's very dusty back here. Uh, and then this is the actual receiver for the Microsoft Media Remote. So those are both of my infrared, I guess infrared and wireless receivers for controllers. And um, the cool thing about like the Xbox 360 controller, and you can do this with the Xbox One controllers as well, is uh, this receiver allows you to connect up to four of these. So if you want to play multiplayer games or something like that, you can. Beyond that, we of course have a lovely assortment of soy candles and um, Final Fantasy guidebooks because we played through Final Fantasy X and now my wife is playing Final Fantasy VII because she's awesome. Further setup will definitely be required over here though. These two bags contain all my HTC Vive components. So for, you know, playing VR stuff, that's important. And then also the, the intent further down the road, I'm not gonna be doing this today, but the intent of course is to wall mount this whole setup. And to do that, I need to get rid of this whole bookshelf. So I'm probably gonna clear that stuff out too. That really has nothing to do with whether or not you should have a case for your computer. But uh, for anyone who's considered rolling without a case, let's proceed and show you guys what you might be in for.
So I've disconnected all the cables and uh, let's give a, a quick assessment here of the HTPC after about seven months and three weeks of use. Uh, starting with the drives over here, and I'm not sure how well you can see the dust on these things, but you know, it's definitely there, especially back here, you can see a lot. Drives aren't super susceptible to dust. I mean, the main connectors are gonna be your SATA connectors back here, and those are covered when they're plugged in, so not a huge deal there. And also most drives like this are actually sealed internally. This one's actually a helium filled six terabyte drive from HGST. So drives don't necessarily need a lot of protection, uh, at least when it comes to dust, but you do want electro electrostatic shock, uh, electrostatic discharge protection if possible. So that's the main issue with keeping something like a hard drive or an SSD uh, outside of the case. And as you could have seen back over there where I had this all set up, these were literally just hanging off of the back of a subwoofer by their connectors pretty much, um, which is more safe for SSDs than spinning mechanical hard drives. Now when it comes to our motherboard, CPU, memory, and graphics card, we can see a lot more dust buildup. And part of this, of course, is just because these have been sitting uh, in, a, in, a, in a planar fashion, <laughs> just horizontally, so dust falling down can just fall and collect wherever it needs to collect. Now, the thing I've actually been most impressed with with this build uh, when it comes to dust buildup has been the efficacy, both in cooling and uh, minimal dust buildup of our NoFan uh, CR95C here which I first showed you guys in my uh, Can Rise and Be Passively Cooled video. Now, just for the fact that there's no active airflow going over these for the most part means that there's really not that much dust buildup. And in fact, a, a quick dusting off with a feather duster or a, a little soft brush is probably all you're gonna need. Maybe a few, a few little hairs picking up here and there is, is all there's been. Now contrast that with our graphics card here. And again, the left fan on this graphics card has been pretty much spinning 24 seven because this system is on 24 seven. And the right fan has not because EVGA's intelligence, uh, this is a For the Win 2 ICX version of the GT GTX 1080, which has intelligent thermal sensors placed around the card and it will only spin the fans that it determines needs to spin up. Now I would like to go in there and actually reduce the threshold on this so that neither of these fans spin. For typical HTPC duties, there's really no need for these uh, fin fans to spin up at all. They should only be spinning up while I'm playing games. So maybe I'll go in there and mess with that once I get this thing reconfigured. Moving over here to the other side of the graphics card, we can see, of course, more, more dusty buildup on our, our chipset fan cooler and everything. I'm gonna dust all this stuff off in just a second and I'm not gonna use an air duster for it. I'm gonna use uh, a makeup brush and, and it's awesome. Memory here, fortunately, again, not much active airflow over these, so we have a little bit of dust going over here on the edges, but not too much beyond that. Now, all the plugs I wanna point out on the board, the ones that have been plugged in, there's no way for any dust or anything like that to get in them. But something that you might be concerned about, again, especially if you're using a, a, a configuration like I have, where you have no case, no dust filters or anything like that, is dust that might uh, get into unused plugs. Uh, Asus has actually come up with a solution for this in the past, like with their Tough series, where they have uh, plastic pieces and stuff that you can put inside unused plugs to keep dust from collecting in there. Um, this hasn't really been an issue for me in the past, even with used boards or boards that have sat out for a while, but it is something to, to reality check. If you're about to plug, say, a graphics card into a PCI Express slot that hasn't been used for a while, just reality check that there's no dust bunnies hanging out in there or whatever, and maybe consider a can of compressed air or otherwise to uh, dust those out before you go ahead and connect up your overpriced graphics card to it. And there's really not a whole lot more to be seen visually here, just more dust build up here and there. So I'm going to take this outside so I don't redistribute the dust here in my living room and uh, we'll go ahead and get this thing cleaned off. So now that we've relocated into the uh, harsh late March sun of the outdoors, we can get a closer look at this and also look at some of the uh, closer to the PCB parts that maybe weren't visible as I was showing you guys everything inside. I did want to point out though, down here where the graphics card was, by the way, and the graphics card is in the lower slot here to provide clearance for the CR95C. Uh, there's tons and tons of dust buildup right under here. This is a very uh, typical place for dust to build up in a computer build. So this is a good uh, reason why if you're doing some spring cleaning, if you're disassembling a computer and getting in there to clean it out, definitely 
consider pulling the graphics card and getting underneath there because uh, getting that dust out of there is a good idea. Also, lots of dust build up around the actual CPU socket here as well. I am going to engage the duster here. This is just uh, one of my wife's old makeup brushes. Nice and soft and get to dusting. So at this point, we have decided to move back inside because it's very bright outside. There's wild animals and other dangers that we're not sure about. Um, I am just finishing up some dusting of the motherboard using these convenient smaller brushes that my wife also said, hey, you can use these because I don't use them anymore. Um, if you don't have makeup brushes, I don't know what to tell you. Of course, you can use compressed or canned air as well to clean uh, components. That's a good option. The, they are disposable, so that's the trade-off. Uh, you can use an air compressor as well. Just be sure that you have the actual air pressure turned down as low as it can go on those because the air pressure can sometimes blast surface mounting components off of a PCB. Uh, also, as Joe just pointed out, um, air compressors can sometimes get condensation built up in them, so they can sometimes output some liquid as well, and you definitely don't want that going onto your motherboard. But this video is supposed to be more about should you use a computer case and less about the cleaning process. So let's get back to that. And I have a couple more thoughts when it comes to the prospect of using your computer out in the open. And this is probably a little bit more unique to my situation here at home, but my living room here is adjacent to our kitchen. And in our kitchen, for one thing, we don't have an overhead range hood to, to suck up the stuff as we are cooking or frying stuff. Um, and we like to fry food from time to time. Lumpia is a great example. So I have noticed on several of the metal parts of this motherboard because from time to time we get some oil particles in the air they are attracted to stuff like metal and they can leave stains on it so again that's not a huge concern it's more of an aesthetic thing but it is something that you might get a little bit more protection from if you had a case particularly if that case had an air filter to filter out some of the stuff in the air you also might have noticed this large dog behind me and that's definitely something to be concerned about as well Dogs may be slightly less so, but also small children. And I would be crazy if I had kids right now to leave a computer sitting on top of a subwoofer like I have done for the past seven or eight months. I've been lucky enough that the dogs, as large and cumbersome as this one might be from time to time, he, he's a little clumsy from time to time, but he hasn't managed to knock anything over. But physical access to the hardware, of course, is something that's a concern, especially when you have a graphics card that's just sitting in there hanging without anything really holding it up. All that being said though, what lessons can we learn from my video here, which I've clearly been planning for a very long time. The first is that if you're building a traditional system, it's probably a good idea to go with a case. It's just gonna be easier to get everything together and it's gonna be easier to keep things clean and it's gonna be easier to keep things protected. However, what's my next steps? Since this is my HTPC, which I have promised as of many, many months ago, that I would be doing a follow-up on and giving you guys more feedback. Well, first, I'm not gonna be putting this in a case, so I guess I've learned nothing from today's video. That was your job, not mine. Uh, but I am gonna take this corner over here, which is currently full of old DVDs and games and stuff like that. I'm gonna clear that out, because that's part of the initial process, and I'm gonna get the old piece of wood that I was initially planning on mounting this all up to, get it over here in the corner, and that will get me primed, I think, for the next step, which I'll follow up on in another video. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. In the meantime, of course, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button if you did, and I'll put uh, links to the parts I'm using here as well, some other relevant stuff down in the video's description. And of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see more videos like this in the future. For now, I'm getting back to work. We'll see you guys in the next one.
So happy to say that the uh, HTPC is back up and running and thanks to all you guys who stuck with me all the way through here to the end. I just wanted to give you a quick final look. Uh, the Digi Fanless is installed. Fanless, fanless. I still have a single fan on the graphics card, but I'll worry about that later. The drives are hanging precariously off of the edge of the subwoofer, but uh, this is how it's gonna be for the time being. And also just to get a better idea of how it's gonna look, I did bring the slab of walnut over to set it up against the wall. Ideally, I'm going to mount it you know, just a little bit higher and stain it and sand it and all that stuff too. Uh, but for now, guys, that's all for this one. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.